what I love, this Bitcoin FOMO apocalypse theory of there's 21 million. The second it's one more, to me, it's like Square's doing it, MicroStrategy's doing it. Like we get a couple more, then the dominoes start to fall. What about central banks buying this as an asset? That's probably already happening. Like, you know, big tech companies adding this to the balance sheet. Once it becomes the norm and institutionalized, I realize this crazy FOMO run in Bitcoin, 350 billion. If it's gold 2.0 and that's 7 trillion, we have like an immediate 20 to 30 X to just get to gold size. And it feels like to me, this corporate treasury switch could be a massive catalyst for sort of the Bitcoin FOMO apocalypse. Um, maybe I'm getting too carried away and too bullish there, but I'm kind of curious how you think this, the next dominoes fall with micro strategy. You know, are there other companies? I think there's... There's two ideas that are new ideas that most people, 99% of the world doesn't understand that I'm going to share with you. First idea, Bitcoin is rotating this year from the old, the old insight narrative, which is it's an uncorrelated speculative asset traded by retail traders on offshore exchanges with leverage that's kind of cool. It's rotating to a, a, a new insight, which is it's the world's best long duration investment grade safe haven treasury asset. It's, it's something you're going you're gonna to use to give money to your grandchildren. If you want to have money 30 years from now, 60 years from now, and you want to put your money in property that the state can't seize, no government, you know, the government can't get at, it's not going to be taxed away like real estate. It's going to be there for 30 years, 40 years. Then, this is the ultimate long duration safe haven asset. That's a new idea because people that put money into that idea are just gonna let it sit there for a decade. They're not traders, they're not speculators. By the way, you see companies like my company, we have like nearly 800 million in it right now. And you'll see, uh, you'll see insurance companies like Mass Mutual putting 100 million in, it, that's 100 million out of a $230 billion general fund. What happens when they put 1% in? or 2% in. So that rotation from speculative asset to safe haven asset is a big idea because you go from 1% of the people betting 1% of their money to 100% of the people betting 50% of their money. Okay, big idea. Like there's $300 trillion worth of monetary energy sitting between bond stocks and real estate. Half of it just wants a store of value. So there's no reason why $150 trillion wouldn't flow into the Bitcoin network. And so we're not, we're not talking about demonetizing gold. We're talking about the people that stampeded to gold or, or, or S&P indexes or stock indexes or bond indexes. If you don't love, if, if you own Tesla, you love it. But there's a lot of people that buy stocks they don't love. They just put it in there because they don't want to lose their money. And so they will use Bitcoin as a savings account. It's like the savings and loan at the end of the universe, right? It's just a savings account. Yeah. That's the and, and I was, I, I love this idea of the deflationary kind of principle of like, you shouldn't have to work to, to, to find assets to put in that are going to appreciate. Like it's such a kind of a messed up system where everybody's like, you're a doctor, but you also have to have a full-time job of managing your assets. Otherwise you're just going to lose all that wealth and value you created. It'll be an incredible, amazing society. If you can just put it in Bitcoin and it will appreciate because we have a naturally deflationary pressure on the entire pricing system, of the economy. So I actually love, like, it's an amazing, like, financial freedom and sort of incredible unlock of value for, for individuals in theory. It's a savings and loan in cyberspace that's available to 7.8 billion people where no politician can steal your money, right? That's a simple idea. Everybody on earth needs it. Simple. There's another idea though, which is this is the first truly engineered monetary network in the history of the world. And by that, I mean, it's a closed thermodynamically sound monetary system. If you put a hundred million dollars in the system, it's like charging a battery. It has no power loss. You can store it for a hundred years. It'll still be there. Um, every other monetary system has a power loss in it. It bleeds energy. If you put your money into, you, you know, if you put your money into, a, into electricity and store it in a battery, you'd lose 2% a month. You have 24% inflation rate a year. If you put your money, you know, that's the problem. You can't move electricity around without losing 6% of it over the course of a few hundred miles. So what if I wanted to store all my monetary energy and I didn't want to lose it every month or every year or every decade? Well, I design a closed system, 21 million gold coins. No, none come in, none go out. All I can do is heat it up or cool it down. 
That's the definition of a thermodynamic closed system. Bitcoin is the first example of that system. What that means is that you can collect all of the monetary energy in the world, store it in this battery, hold it for 100 years, channel it through time and space with no energy loss. It's an engineering breakthrough. It's like an aqueduct. It's like an electrical power system or grid. So if I said to you, I thought I'd build a city, but I thought I'd plug it into an aqueduct, you wouldn't say I'm crazy. You would say that's a good idea so that all your people don't like die due to lack of water and sanitation, right? It's like building a city on a river. Is that, is that a crazy idea or a good idea to have a river flowing through the city? If, what if I decided I was going to have a city with roads in it? Good idea, bad idea. How about my house is going to be wired for electricity? Good idea, bad idea. Or I have a company. We're going to be on the internet. Okay, it's not risky to be on the internet with electricity and have running water. These are not risky things, but they were pretty crazy ideas before we had the internet, electricity, and running water. Okay, so Bitcoin is a monetary network. When Jack Dorsey plugged Square into it, he, he plugged Square into the monetary network. PayPal is plugged into the monetary network. MicroStrategy plugged itself into the monetary network. Why? Because all the other networks are, if you're in cash, you're losing 15% of your energy a year. If you're in gold, you're losing three or 4% of your energy a year. If you're using a, a stock portfolio, you got to guess Google versus Facebook versus Amazon versus Tesla and juggle the thing and worry about what happens every quarter. It's too complicated. What if I just wanted to plug into a monetary network that will store and protect my energy from depletion for the next decade? No one's ever figured it out. Bitcoin is Facebook for money. If Facebook's worth a trillion dollars because it stores the social energy of a billion people or two billion, Bitcoin has gotta be worth 100X that much because it's storing the money of a billion people. When Rupert Murdoch shows up to Facebook, he doesn't bring a billion friends. When Rupert Murdoch shows up to Bitcoin, he's going to drop a billion dollars on the network, like immediately, because what do you do with a monetary network other than put all your money on it? It's a pretty big idea. It's not a speculative, uncorrelated asset. It's the first monetary network in the history of the world that we figured out how to make work.